the comfrey plant has so many benefits, but it's also one of the most controversial herbs out there. In this episode, I'm sharing safety tips for working with both comfrey root and comfrey leaf. Plus, I'll be showing you exactly how to make a deeply healing comfrey plant poultice. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. People have long been amazed by Comfrey's ability to heal wounds and broken bones. In the 17th century, herbalist John Parkinson said that Comfrey was so amazing for knitting together flesh that if you put two pieces of severed flesh in a pot with Comfrey, they'd be joined together again. To be honest, I haven't tried this myself, and while I doubt that it really works, I have no doubt that Comfrey is a powerful wound healer. I've seen it work many times with my own eyes. Do you have experience with the Comfrey plant? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on YouTube or on the official podcast page, herbswithrosaliepodcast.com. Your comments mean a lot to me. I love cultivating a community of kind-hearted, plant-loving folks. Plus, it's always interesting and insightful to hear the experiences of plant lovers out there. Your suggestion may also help others. Okay, let's dive in. The comfrey plant is both cooling and moistening. It's often indicated for hot and dry conditions such as a burn. If you're unfamiliar with the term herbal energetics, this is simply looking at the qualities of a plant in regards to it being hot or cool and damp or dry, and then matching those qualities to a person or a condition. So in this case, the hot stinging qualities of a burn, whether it's a sunburn or a minor burn from say cooking, are both relieved by the cooling and moistening qualities of comfrey. Comfrey is also an amazing healer of tissues, which I'm going to share lots about in just a minute. Its cooling abilities are wonderful for modulating inflammation of the musculoskeletal system, especially when there are signs of heat and dryness. As a side note, turmeric often gets lots of praise, and rightfully so, for being a powerful plant for the musculoskeletal system. But turmeric is very drying, so it's not always a great match when you have lots of heat and dryness already. Comfrey could be another great choice instead. My first book, Alchemy of Herbs, shows you exactly how to choose herbs that are best for you based on herbal energetics. So if you're new to these concepts, check out that book to get a foundational understanding that will dramatically increase your effectiveness with herbs. Above all, comfrey is a supreme healer of the body's connective tissues, including mucous membranes, fascia, the skin, and bones, and it works amazingly well from everything from little scratches and rashes and boo-boos to more serious cases such as eczema, skin ulcers, sprains, broken bones, rheumatic complaints, and from healing from surgery. Many herbalists have amazing comfrey tales to tell, and I've racked up a few of my own over the years. I've seen my mother-in-law avoid knee surgery, to the amazement of her doctor. I've seen a second degree burn on my own thumb that was immediately soothed and then completely healed within 24 hours. And countless other minor cuts and bruises restored in record time. But you don't just have to take my word for it. There are multiple clinical trials confirming Comfrey's wound healing abilities. In one randomized double-blind clinical study, 278 patients used either a comfrey cream or a placebo on fresh abrasions. 
those using the Comfrey Cream healed almost three days faster than those using the placebo. Comfrey has also been shown to work well for healing bruises and contusions in children. So how does it work? Well, Comfrey is a cell proliferant. It increases cell growth and rejuvenation, thus propelling healing within your body. Many times, one chemical constituent, elantoin, a known cell proliferant, gets all the credit for this ability. However, one study compared the healing abilities of a water extract of comfrey root versus pure allantoin and concluded that the biological activity of the comfrey root extract cannot be attributed only to allantoin, but is also likely the result of the interaction of different compounds present in the water extract of the comfrey root. Comfrey can also powerfully heal burns. I would never want to be without it as it soothes so many of my own minor burns. I've also seen the topical use of comfrey significantly address swelling. Someone I knew was stung by a wasp and as a result, her arm had just blown up in size. It wasn't a pretty situation at all. By the time she asked me for advice, it had been swollen for days. She ended up using a comfrey as a soak for her arm and the swelling decreased almost immediately. Comfrey's ability to modulate inflammation and decrease pain in the musculoskeletal injuries and general pain dysfunction has been well studied. So get comfy while I share some of these stellar studies. In one randomized, controlled, double-blind clinical study, a topical cream made with comfrey was used for patients with back pain. Those using the comfrey cream, as opposed to the placebo, had significantly increased healing time and decreased pain on active motion during rest and palpation. In another clinical trial with patients who had low back pain, 95.2% of those using the topical comfrey cream had decreased pain as opposed to the meager 37.8% of those using the placebo cream. Please pass the comfrey cream, please. Comfrey has been shown to decrease pain and swelling in acute trauma. In one controlled, double-blind, randomized, multi-center study, 203 patients with ankle sprains were given either a comfrey cream or a placebo cream to use topically. Patients using the comfrey cream saw a highly significant decrease in pain and swelling by days three and four. Okay, that's a lot of studies, but I have one more for you. Comfrey root has been shown to be effective for patients with osteoarthritis of the knee. In one very well-designed clinical study, researchers followed arthritis patients who used a comfrey cream daily for three weeks. Those using the comfrey cream had significant improvements over those using the placebo. They concluded that the results suggest that the comfrey root extract ointment is well suited for the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. Pain is reduced, mobility of the knee improved, and the quality of life increased. As you can see, comfrey is a powerful healer, but as I mentioned earlier, the comfrey plant is also highly controversial. So let's look into that more deeply in this next section. Mention comfrey in a room full of herbalists and you'll most likely be front row seat to a heated discussion. Everyone's got an opinion regarding the safety of comfrey and most herbalists aren't shy about expressing it. For years, I've watched the comfrey debate from afar and noted that many people will refer to someone else when justifying their opinions. They'll say, well, so-and-so says comfrey's safe, so that must be true. Or they'll say, well, this other person says it's not safe, so that must be true. While I have no doubt the comfrey debate will continue on for a long time, I want to address this issue as objectively as possible by looking at what evidence we have both for safety and what evidence we have of its potential harm. My hope is that people will have a better understanding of the complexities of this herb rather than simply relying on who says what. In the end, my goal is that you can feel confident about using the roots and leaves safely. There are three main considerations when looking at the safety of comfrey. Number one, the level and type of alkaloids in the comfrey plant that you're working with. Two, 
the type of medicine you're going to be making with comfrey, and three, the health of the person using the comfrey. Okay, let's look at each one of these more in depth. The first consideration is what exactly is in the comfrey plant that you're working with? Here's what I mean by that. Comfrey contains pyrrolozidine alkaloids, or PAs for short. These pyrrolozidine alkaloids are substances that we know are potentially toxic to humans by causing liver damage. There are over 600 different PAs that have been identified in over 6,000 plants. Many PAs are harmless, but those that are harmful take quite a toll on the liver, causing veno-occlusive liver disease and or liver cancer. PAs are found in the borage, aster, orchid, and pea families. The main concern regarding humans and comfrey is veno-occlusive disease, or VOD. This condition happens when the very small veins of the liver are obstructed, preventing normal liver function and causing a backup of blood in the liver, leading to engorgement, portal vein pressure, fluid buildup in the abdomen, enlarged spleen and liver, scarring, or cirrhosis. Symptoms occur very quickly and about one-fourth of people diagnosed with hepatic VOD die. Here's a hard fact for you. We know without a doubt that all species of comfrey contain varying levels of different types of PAs. The two most often used species of comfrey are Symphytum officinal, which is a common comfrey, and Symphytum ex uplandicum, which is a hybrid. We know that in general, Symphytum ex uplandicum contains more PAs than Symphytum officinal. However, because these plants can easily hybridize within the genus, it's hard to say whether a given plant has a certain level of PAs unless that exact plant has been tested. One set of tests done showed that there were significantly lower levels of PAs in some Phytum officinal leaves after the plant had matured and gone to flower. Studies also show that the leaves have less PAs than the roots. Okay, to sum all this up, all comfrey plants have some level of PAs. Those levels can differ dramatically between various plants and hybrids, the maturity of the plant, and even the plant part. The second consideration is what kind of medicine is being prepared with the comfrey plant. When it comes to comfrey, internal medicines like teas and tinctures are always going to carry a greater risk than using external medicines like poultices, salves, and soaks. And I'll be showing you my favorite poultice preparation in just a bit. Teas or water-based extractions are going to have less alkaloids in them because water is a weak extractor of alkaloids. Tinctures or alcohol-based extractions are going to have more alkaloids because alcohol is a stronger extractor of alkaloids. Sometimes you'll hear claims that water extractions, like teas, do not contain pyrrolozidine alkaloids. However, in one analysis of herbal teas made from the leaves of comfrey, Symphytum officinal, there were PAs present in the tea. If you know me at all, then you know I love it when we can make food our medicine. Comfrey leaves are high in vitamins, minerals, and even protein. The leaves of this plant were also once widely eaten as a wild green food. But while there is an historical tradition of eating comfrey, what we know now about PAs makes this a bit problematic. As a rule, I avoid citing unethical animal studies in my work. There have, unfortunately, been a number of studies of comfrey involving rats. I will not cite them here, but only acknowledge they exist and that when you feed rats large amounts of comfrey, like ridiculous amounts of comfrey, they will get a liver tumor. I've heard herbalists point out the flaws of using these studies. For example, rats aren't humans, the dosage was insanely high, and then claim that since these studies are flawed, comfrey must be safe. The reality is, even if you completely disregard these animal studies, there is still evidence that comfrey is potentially harmful to humans. In the same light, using only these flawed studies to proclaim that comfrey is dangerous is also misleading. To date, there have been no human clinical trials regarding comfrey ingestion. 
Since there are concerns about comfrey toxicity, you can imagine the ethical considerations a human clinical trial would raise. Which brings us to our third consideration, the health of the person working with comfrey. There are some people today who love comfrey and they regularly drink the tea seemingly without issues. Before the potential for toxicity was known, comfrey root was used internally for many hot conditions such as dry, irritated lungs. It was also used for internal bleeding of the lungs and digestive tract such as ulcers and hemorrhoids. There are also some cautious human case studies regarding comfrey consumption. In all of these case studies, comfrey does appear to have caused problems. But there are also multiple confounding factors such as using hepatotoxic drugs as well as malnutrition. If you're interested in reading those case studies yourself, I'll leave citations for them in the show notes on the herbswithrosaliepodcast.com page. Okay, let's sum this up. All comfrey plants contain some level of PAs, but it's hard to know exactly how much unless you get that actual plant tested. The method that you use to prepare comfrey matters. External use of comfrey leaf and root is far safer than internal use. Teas are gonna be safer than alcohol extractions. Mature leaves will be safer than roots or even young leaves. And lastly, a big unknown is how individuals might respond to PAs, as there can be a lot of individual circumstances that make one person more susceptible than another. Without a doubt, and this is very important, neither comfrey root nor leaf should be used during pregnancy, breastfeeding, or in small children with developing livers. So after all that summary, I'll just say my personal take is that I don't feel like it's ethical to recommend this plant internally until we know more about how to use it safely for everyone. Comfrey is native to Europe and Asia and likes to grow in sunny, moist areas. There are many species of comfrey in the Symphytum genus. Symphytum officinale, common comfrey, is most often used as medicine. Symphytum ex ablandicum is a commonly sold hybrid. This section describes Symphytum officinale. Comfrey is a very hardy perennial with a strong root base. This plant is practically impossible to kill in temperate regions. You can hack away all of its leaves and even part of its root and it will still grow back. The leaves are oblong and coarsely textured with smooth margins. It flowers in the late spring to summer with flowers ranging from pink to blue to purple. The flowers are small and bell-shaped, typical of the borash family. Bees love the flowers, and it's a lot of fun to watch them dunk their heads inside a flower to take a sip. Comfrey can grow up to four feet in height. It's easily grown from seed or root cutting in temperate zones, but once you have comfrey in your garden, prepare to always have comfrey in your garden because even the smallest piece of root can continue growing. It's practically impossible to remove it entirely. If you want to grow comfrey, either plant it in its forever place and think about that place very carefully or consider growing it in a very strong and large container. As always, it's important to correctly ID any plant that you're working with. Knowing common lookalikes can help you avoid serious mistakes. Before the plant flowers, comfrey leaves can look a lot like foxglove or digitalis. Mistaking foxglove for comfrey has caused fatalities, as foxglove can cause some serious heart issues when taken internally. The safest way to use comfrey is with external applications, including poultices, salves, and fomentations or washes and soaks. These preparations are ideally made from the fresh leaves and or the fresh roots. Just to be super clear, here are a list of comfrey considerations, things to keep in mind when using comfrey safely. Number one. All species of comfrey contain pyroloizidine alkaloids, which can potentially cause serious damage to the liver when taken internally. The mature leaves of Symphytum officinale contain the lowest amount of PAs. 
the young leaves and roots contain the most PAs. Number two, as a result, comfrey should never be used internally during pregnancy, breastfeeding, or in small children with developing livers. Third, some herbalists recommend using the mature leaves as a tea for short periods of time, for example, one to two weeks, during healing of a broken bone or a traumatic injury. While many people do this with no known adverse effects, there is a rare but real risk depending on the circumstantial factors. As shared earlier, these include the levels of PAs in that particular plant, the health of the person, whether or not they're drinking the tea, etc. Fourth, comfrey used topically is considered safe in regards to the PA toxicity concerns. Yay. Five, however, Comfrey should not be used on infected or dirty wounds, especially puncture wounds, because it might heal the skin without eliminating the infection. Six, because of comfrey's amazing cell proliferation effects, there are concerns that using comfrey topically over a broken bone that hasn't been correctly set may heal the bone out of place. When used safely, comfrey is hands down the most healing plant for wounds, burns, injuries, and even musculoskeletal pain. It works so well that you have to be cautious and only apply this poultice to clean wounds without any sign of infection, such as excess redness, itching, swollen, uh, heat to the touch, pus, and so on. You also have to be careful not to apply it to bones that haven't been set. Comfrey is said to work so quickly that it can seal in an infection and heal bones out of place. However, when used correctly, you'll find that there's no better stitcher upper than comfrey. The following comfrey poultice was written for our book, Wild Remedies, How to Forage Healing Foods and Craft Your Own Herbal Medicine. However, this recipe never made it to the book because we had to edit it down for length. So you can consider this a bonus recipe. This recipe is also part of our medicine making course, Rooted Medicine Circle. If you don't already own Wild Remedies, this is an essential guide to learning about the edible and medicinal gifts of the plants that grow around you. You can find it wherever books are sold and then visit wildremediesbook.com to register for your exclusive bonuses, like a three-part documentary highlighting many herbalists like Rosemary Gladstar, Robin Rose Bennett, Guido Maze, and Mark Williams, all whom have been guests on this podcast. Here's what you'll need to make the poultice. Two cups fresh comfrey leaves and small stems roughly chopped, and about a quarter cup of water. All you need to do to make this is place the leaves in a small food processor or blender, and then turn the machine on and slowly drizzle about a quarter cup of water. What you wanna do is form a thick mixture without it being too runny. Once it's well blended, use a spatula to scrape it into a small bowl. If you're gonna use it immediately, then you can spread the mixture thickly over the effective area and then wrap it with a clean gauze, a bandage, or an old clean t-shirt. Change this every one to three hours. You can also freeze this for year round use. There's a couple of ways to do that. The first is to simply freeze it in ice cube trays. Once frozen, pop them out of there, store in a freezer safe bag, and be sure to label it. Or the paste can be simply frozen in a freezer safe bag. For best results, use a vacuum pack sealer. Again, be sure to label it well with both the contents and the date. I recommend using it within a year. You can use the same method for preparing a poultice with the fresh roots. If you'd like a free printable recipe card of this comfrey poultice recipe, then visit the link in the video description. Also in the video description, I've included helpful links like where you can buy comfrey as well as both of my books. If you enjoyed this video on the health benefits of the comfrey plant and you value trusted herbal information, then I hope you'll stick around. The best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be the first to get my best herbal insights and recipes. Here's your comfrey fun fact. Comfrey is commonly used in regenerative farming and gardening. 
the leaves can be used as a mulch, added to the compost pile, or fermented down to make a dense green liquid that can be used as a potent fertilizer. The hybrid, Symphytum X uplandicum, is often used for this, but any comfrey will do. Comfrey is also being explored as a nutritive forage food for animals.